let's talk about majoring in CS. So it is just the end of my first semester here at Brown. Um, it's final season right now. I'm making this video instead of studying. So, I mean, that's cool. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about majoring in CS, although I haven't officially declared my major. I'm thinking, like, highly considering majoring in CS, actually a CS econ joint concentration, but you know, a lot of computers um, nonetheless. And I'm going to talk a little bit about tips, my experience so far, what to expect, and show you a little bit what I've done this term, because I think, I think it's pretty cool. Um, and I also hope you enjoyed that aesthetic b-roll at the beginning because um, I sat alone in the dark. So I hope you enjoyed that and let's get right into it. So I guess we can start with expectations versus reality. So before I came to Brown, um, I tried a little bit of CS. I tried the Harvard CS50 course, um, which I just hated. I actually lasted for three weeks, even though they started in week zero to make it more like computer science, which is like, I was just not good at it. And I came in thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be so bad at CS. I was just gonna take the introductory course and hope for the freaking best. Um, my tour guide, well not my tour guide, my unit leader when I went to ADOC, like, which is like um, a brown visit day, she said she was majoring in CS. So I texted her all throughout the summer asking her what I should do, what I should take, if I would like be okay. I was freaking out. Um, but when I actually started the course, it was actually so manageable. I ended up taking CS15, which if you're at Brown or you know about Brown, that's like one of the most popular courses at the entire like school. Um, it's the introductory CS course, introductory to object-oriented programming in Java. And it was super fun. I really liked it. Um, I need to turn my final project tomorrow and I'll show you guys more on that later. Really cool, they had lots of fun skits and it was just like a really fun time and lectures, even though they were an hour and 20 minutes, they didn't feel that long, at least to me, and it was super informative and I just really love games and making games and so like making an actual game that like people play like Tetris and Doodle Jump, I was like this is like really freaking cool. Now we're going to talk about some tips on taking CS. I think there's definitely tips that everyone could take away, even not for CS, just for like general like academic life. Time freaking management. Some people, some people, okay, so we were making Tetris and it was like a thousand-ish lines of code and people were really starting it the weekend before and I'm like, you're not going to like the course if they gave you two weeks to do it and you can't just do it in two days. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna be as enjoyable. You're gonna be super rushed. You're gonna be freaking out. With CS, you definitely need to start early, especially in lots of projects. Cause even though in concept, you're like, oh, Tetris, that's such an easy game. It's not like, I don't know, you're not coding like Call of Duty. Um, it seems simple, but like actually implementing the algorithm and saying every single step the computer needs to take and checking for if statements and all this different stuff you need to start early because like you're definitely going to run into some bugs like even me i still think i'm so yeah time management is huge and i think that applies to like literally any aspect of life so just starting a little bit earlier you don't need to start like right when they assign it but just doing like a few lines of code every day like maybe like even 50 lines of code every day makes everything so much easier and way more digestible Who for cs definitely you need to know your foundational knowledge especially reviewing lecture slides and maybe if they also have lecture capture re-watching those if you forget something because you're bound to um but always refreshing yourself on that foundational knowledge will like really help because that's the basis I mean, it's what your code's really made of. If you don't have the right syntax, or way too many bugs. And if you don't know all like the types of like data structures you need or the different actual things that Java or whatever language you it, you're in has in their own library, you don't have access to those methods, you could end up making it so much harder on yourself than if you have this foundational knowledge. So this one is definitely something that I think might be the reason why a lot of kids struggle with CS and like I found actually as we've gotten harder and like we got off support code and then as we've gotten like harder projects I've actually found coding is a lot easier for me and I think a lot of people especially when I look at our critical review which is basically sort of like a rate your professors but for the actual like course and a lot of people say um, CS15 gets exponentially harder which I think the issue is, is people aren't applying what they've learned before to more larger projects. 
And this kind of goes along with foundational knowledge. Of course, you should have that. But for each project and for each lecture even, you're learning something new that is going to be applied in your next project or test if you have tests. We don't have tests. CS, and I think a lot of STEM courses like math too, you build up on things over time. It's like you learned addition in first grade and you're still using it now, but it's maybe a little bit more complicated. Like you use addition to understand multiplication and multiplication to understand division and division and then you have all these different areas of STEM and the same thing happens with CS. So definitely applying what you've learned earlier to new things is so helpful. So let's talk a little bit about my... <laughs> can I speak? A little bit about... <laughs> A little bit about what I have done. All right, so I've opened up a clip, which is our IDE. I just tried to run AndyBot to see if I could like get it to run, but I think it's, something's weird going on with the support code and me using remote access because I'm not going to film in the Sun Lab, which is our CIT building lab. Anyway, so I was basically saying this code, um, which is our first project, took me around two hours to write which is really unfortunate um lots of time spent and basically so that's where i'm starting 10 lines of code taking me two hours lots of stress after doing this project um which is literally writing one method um i had to go to the gym and listen to disney music um while just walking on the treadmill to like blow off steam so that's where we're starting and now i'm going to take you to my final project which, okay, so I decided to do an independent project, um, which basically means um, that, oh, <laughs> what? It means that I designed my own project and um, I kind of just like, yeah, I designed my own project and then coded it. And right now it's about 2,100 lines of code. Um, this is definitely the longest class, about over a thousand. So I have like lots of complicated algorithms here and um actually not lots of calculating it atoms i'm gonna stop trying to flex um it's just like a lot of code and and i'm like pretty proud of this and i think it, it was really fun to make and i really liked having experience to be able to design something myself um as i said earlier i did go to that pac-man session and that's because i was applying to do the independent project and i didn't know if i would get it or not um so pac-man was gonna be my backup but i'm really happy i got to like design my own thing because I feel like that's sort of representative of what I would do if I were like an actual software engineer and so I'm gonna run this a little bit it's basically I don't know if you've seen the package but it's a Naruto fighting game and you can fight against a computer or you can have multiplayer and I remember literally telling someone about this and they were I was like oh do you know Naruto I was like sis like I don't just spend my free time watching anime hello like I sit alone in the dark and I said before um but second of all if i like was like an anime head like why are you judging like what is your point this is a safe space bye anyway so i coded this and i'm super proud of it so i'm just gonna like run it and oh my gosh is it because <sighs> okay i have to compile from the command line anyway Oh, whoops, okay. I'm so sorry. I literally, I'm just trying to make a, um. but anyway, here is the game. It's gonna be kind of laggy because I am remote. I'm from remote access right now, which makes things a lot slower. Um, so we didn't have a Sasuke. I literally sound like a freaking nerd. Anyway, <laughs> um, I guess I'm just gonna go Naruto being the computer, Sasuke being the player. Again, it's gonna go pretty laggy, but I want you guys to like get an idea of like what I was able to do. So I've like set up the background, I imported some images, I have some buttons, some toggle groups. There's like a super attack bar. Naruto's controlled by a computer, so at the moment he's running away, and now he's coming, he's coming for me, running up on me. Um, there are health bars and see he just attacked me and there was a little fade this is the worst narration ever but anyway i'm happy about this and there's like a super attack so he just russ and shuriken to me it's just, just this sounds like embarrassing but i'm very happy with this project <laughs> um so yeah basically there's been a lot of improvement over the semester which i'm super happy about um 
even though this project is taking me a much longer time, it's not like it took me two hours to write every single 10 lines of code, um, which I'm very happy about. I'm able to make way cooler things and it's been a really cool experience and I would totally recommend if you're not even going to major in CS just to take an introductory course because it's pretty useful and the call to be really fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, maybe found something helpful. Um, yeah. And if nothing else, hopefully you enjoyed the B-roll of me sitting in the dark. Alright, thank you guys. Bye.